Welcome back to Monroe Live, everybody. We have Antonio Donano here. Today, we're gonna to look at the top of the battery pack for the Model Y with the 4680 cells. And what we're specifically looking at is the current collectors, is that Correct. what you call them? Antonio, run through the layout, how they're welded. Tell our viewers what they see here. All right, so we're seeing a grouping of nine cells in parallel. So if you follow the positives along this current collector, You'll get nine. And they're alternating, so you have one on this end, two on this end. Gives us the odd number. Uh, we're also seeing uh, what is a little bit different, a bit of a combination of the plaid bonding with the Model 3, Model Y current collector strategy, is the current collector is welded directly to the cells themselves. So it removes uh, failure points that were normally present when you had current collector to cell bonding with the wire bonds. So we can take it to compare it to the Model Y. You had very small bonds, which were connected uh, from the current collector and they jumped over into the cell. Now, how many were in parallel for the Model Y and the Model 3? Roughly 40 something? It was something like that. Yeah. So you reduce the number of cells in parallel. So you have nine, each one is handling more load more current, correct, that correct? Because of the size of the cell. Yeah, and the welds are larger. And I also want to point out the small little, oh, there's copper, these little copper. The copper is the VSH, which is a voltage sensor harness weld from the battery management board to the actual brick. So it's monitoring the voltage and temperature output of each brick. And there's multiple colors here. So we see the pink polyurethane which some of that is, a, I think, a spillover from uh, passing through these small triangles. Right. But then there's a thin layer of, you know, uh, what is this, like yellowish green? It explain looks like what, a piece, Explain what that is. It looks like a base of PCBA. So uh, Tesla did some integration where uh, the current collector itself is adhered to the PCBA, which is then adhered to the top uh, plastic cover. So what, in, in effect, you get is a drop in place part. It's almost impossible to misalign it. Okay. And is there anything that you've seen as you're tearing this down, Antonio, that, that kind of is impressive to you or that makes you question something? Uh, other than the pink urethane foam of death that is impossible to remove? Um, no, it's a very good strategy overall. They uh, connect to three terminals on the ends. So, uh, disconnecting the entire pack or module, um, I believe the term is array that we're using for this, uh, is a lot easier, just cut here. On the other end, we have more connections. Uh, we have seven connections going across here. And we were able to remove this small plastic cover. Eric, if you can look over here. Uh, there was this plastic cover with these little squares. Remove that and underneath one side, we see that there is the connector for the BMS. So the BMS is, the, is on the side. I know Sandy and I originally thought that the BMS board was gonna be under this because that's where it was on the Model 3 and Model Y, it was not. So it turns out the bee's nest thing, as Sandy referred to it, is just a support where it's a little bit more rigid. Yeah, so it's pretty hard to remove it, but it's on both sides, so it's rigid all the way around. Um, it's just protecting the attachment point for the BMB and then battery management board. There's also a connector over here. Um, I see it looks like a four pin connector and it travels back to this center. Uh, what is that? The center board? Yeah, this connects up to the penthouse, so it's a, kind of a relay. Right there? Yeah. Um, the, uh, we were also expecting the BMB to be under the orange plastic, but it turns out it's just a very large uh, current strip, current collecting strip to go up to the penthouse. Now, how is this isolated from the, the cans below? Is it just laying on top of here? It is just laying on top. It's using the thickness of the, uh, we're assuming nylon plastic and the uh, propensity of the pink urethane. And it looks like there's some laser welds right here. Right, these connected, that connected the strip, the seven attachment points to this. 
BNB is definitely on the side of the module as opposed to on the top. This Monroe Live video is sponsored by Anchor and their 757 power station. Sandy, what do you see right here when we got this thing? Okay, so when we got it, uh, the first thing I did is I looked at these coils and I said, how come there's so many? And then I figured out, look at all these different outputs. This thing has to go from AC to DC, 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 and DC basically to smaller DC. So I, that's why these coils are here. To, uh, to eliminate any sort of issues that you're going to have with, uh, with stray voltage and things like that. And the cells are LFP. LFP is lithium iron phosphate. And our battery module, when we pulled it out, it was very well assembled. It had this nice cover on top. You can see the bus bar strategy is something we see out of only the most right. advanced EVs. Yeah, so this thing is uh, basically uh, 1.2 kilowatt hours, a little bit more than 1.2, but I'm telling you, this is fabulous. And then it's got connections back here, not only for 110, like we're plugging it in. And by the way, it takes an hour to charge this thing, which is wicked fast. And then it's also got a connection for your solar panel. I'm, I'm very, very impressed. Um, I would say uh, so this has definitely got my seal of approval. If you're, uh, if you're into camping and whatnot, you should buy one of these. At Monroe, we don't take our recommendations lightly. We've had our entire electronics team over here reviewing the circuit boards, the circuitry, even the assembly of the housing. Anchor really thought out how this thing is built, and it's a really high quality product. Uh, and we, we wanted to show the backside of this uh, piece that we stripped off. You, know what you, you call top. this FR4, is that correct? Uh, it might be FR4, it might be, or sus I'm suspecting nylon, nylon. Uh, glass fill nylon. But on the back side, it appears as if uh, there, it's a piece of plastic form, but it's not. It's glue. Is the white stuff like a really strong, strong glue? So what the white stuff is, it's almost like an insulating caulking almost. Uh, it's a silicone for sure. Uh, so it was poured down over the positive terminal connections to isolate one before all the, uh, after the positive weld was made, uh, probably before the negative weld was made. Yeah. to ensure that nothing was shorted during the bonding process. And this is bonded so well, it looks like it actually took some of the current collector pieces with it. Right, so the silicone itself kind of shaped itself to the gap in the cell. So we weren't sure if this was an actual part at first, uh, but we realized it's just the imprint of the gap in the PCBA. Um, and it was so well formed that these strips will actually slide out. If I can get one too. They won't pull up, but they slide in and out. Oh, I see that. Yeah. And I know we were talking about the voltage sensor. The voltage sensor. So you see this strip right here. It's got a hexagonal honeycomb shape going on there. Um, and we also noticed there is a thermistor on the end of it. So. I might have spoke a little earlier and said there was a voltage or a thermistor on each brick, but it appears there's gonna be three of them because of the wiring. So yeah. probably one in the end, one in the middle. So you can barely see the path in here of, of the wiring. So it's a really unique, complicated path. They, they have to, you know, wiggle around these cells and it's probably getting smaller as it goes out because there's less, is there less circuits down here? It should get smaller to thicker going towards the uh, BMB yeah. as it picks up more current points. Now, to c compare and contrast this to a battery pack from, let's say, GM, the Ultium platform, uh, Ford using, I think, SK, um, it's, there's definitely a ton of complication when it, when it comes to connecting all these batteries. So, even though the previous Model 3 and Model Y had 4,416 cells, this has how many? 828? Is that what we... 828. 828 so cells. So a massive amount of connections, but we, what you get here is a higher level of energy density. Yes. From a gravimetric and a volumetric perspective. Is that correct, Antonio? Uh, pouch cells generally are more dense on a volumetric, um, but compared to the 2170s, this is a major step up. Um, so we ran through a bunch of details uh, of this battery pack. We hope that you've learned a little bit here. Um, it's an incredible detailed, arduous task for us to, to power our way through this battery pack. Here you go, take that. 
and we're glad you're all tuning in for it. Um, just one quick note before we wrap up. Um, thank you to everybody who subscribed. We passed 313,000 subscribers, but if you are on Twitter or if you are on Instagram, our presence on those two platforms are growing. So consider following us on Twitter or following us on Instagram. Um, we'd really like that because we put a lot of additional content on those platforms. And one other thing, we did get a sell out. So here you go. You want to talk about what we see? All right. So on a sell, we have the polyurethane. We also have a, uh, a thin adhesive strip, which is very tenacious. It is a wicking adhesive because it is applied on the outside. It rolls around the cell of the can and then uses the capillary action between the uh, cooling tube itself and the cell to expand and cover the surface. Um, there's also a gasket on the bottom. I'm not going to be able to get this off with the gloves on. Uh, positive terminal, laser weld, laser weld. And uh, we're not seeing anything that is like um, the spiral pattern, which is probably an internal uh, seal gasket for yeah. pressure burst. And we've been able to extract two of the cells. And I think our goal is to extract all of them, 600 yes. of them. So stay tuned for more. We'll probably have a few more videos on this 4680 pack. Once again, if you already follow us on YouTube, check out Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn if you're on LinkedIn. We post a bunch of additional content on those platforms. Thank you very much.